new show, I need to open the flow So I picked up the phone and called a guy I know His name's Frederick, singer of gospel and soul And he said, okay Bates, meet me at the studio Tracy the producer said, how do you want it to go? Ha ha ha, I thought you'd never ask bro Well it's gotta be fun with just a little scratch Cause I'm a big fan of the old school rap And just a bit of country, yeah that would be cool Cause Dolly and I went to the same high school yeah, some of that, some of this, and oh, a Guns N' Roses riff. Put it all together, here's what we came up with. No, Bates, that is all wrong. Give it to me, I'll do the song. Oh, oh, oh. It's the James Bates Show. It seems like only yesterday that Danny was up in New York City winning the Heisman Trophy. But it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago when this picture was taken, right before the Florida Gators won the 1996 National Championship. There's a bunch of good guys right there. Head coach Steve Spurrier, he's a pretty good coach, and a lot of good football players, a lot of good friends, a lot of good football players that are still playing on Sundays. Outstanding careers in the NFL, a lot of guys with successful careers off of the football field, and a lot of guys with beautiful families now. Bottom line is there a lot of good friends. Good friends like Travis McGriff, who actually wasn't there when this picture was taken. Everybody on the team made it except for Travis. He missed his flight, and they had to superimpose him. See how he looks kind of different? And you know, come to think of it, another guy who probably should be there but isn't is Rich Benzing. <laughs> The main concern here is uh, we take care of all of our base customers and transient people that come in like that King Air right there. Uh, do all that, basically everything aspect wise of aviation from fueling to putting oil in their engines, uh, catering, uh, coffee, papers, ice, whatever they need, whatever the pilot's needs are, we take care of that. And if they're going to be here overnight then we put them in a designated spot and tie them down. Uh, base customers come back, we put them away, if they need a pull out, if they're going to out flying, we get them out and get them all prepped up. and ready to go and just uh, between me and the crew we have here you know we just try to have as much fun out here on the ramp as possible you know. Yeah here we got to kind of keep our eyes and ears open you know because things just happen so quick and unexpected you know it's just, it gets, it gets crazy you know. No seriously he, he never wore the orange and blue out on the football field but believe it or not that guy right there Rich aka Crazy Rich Benzing? Yeah, that's Crazy Rich. He was a huge part of that national championship run. He was the peanut butter on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that helped to hold the whole thing together. Or maybe he was the chips, because he is a little bit different. It's kind of fun that my buddies here in Florida feel like having it. Rich, wiggle out! And uh, they call it pain. The things he would do is, I, I, you can't put in the words, you just have to see the guy. You know, he was unbelievable. He is that typical college football fan on steroids. Crazy face! I mean, he's this little guy. I mean, Rich isn't, he's not the biggest dude in the world. He was maybe, what, five, six, maybe one, 25 soaking wet. I think Rich, if you like, threw him in a pool, picked him up, put him on a scale, he probably weighs 130 pounds. Rich, Rich is not that big. You know, if you, for, at first glance, you think just average dude. So, Rich, I understand that you're a motivational speaker. Um, that sounds like an interesting job. What kind of, can you tell me a little bit about it? What kind of techniques you use? I motivate people in the aspect of uh, dealing with the situation that might arise, say, as in a football game, to motivate the player to a level of just all out chaos, getting in his face, banging, banging your head on his helmet, such as, you know, just banging him and slapping on the pads and telling him it's time to go out and inflict pain. But, once he gets talking about Florida football and the and, and the, the pain, you know, it's on. Come here. Come here. Okay, boys. This is what we're going up to Knoxville for. I have to give you a little sample of what's gonna happen to Peyton Manning! Oh yeah. Peyton! Peyton Manning. 
He, he wasn't big, but he was fearless. <laughs> he was fearless. No matter how big it is, and you got to be a person, they're going down, and Rich, Rich is bringing it as, as hard and fast as he can. This scar right here came from that uh, 93 West Virginia, Florida game. That's originally how I came to know about Crazy Rich, because I was told the story about how he banged his head on a pole and how there was blood just gushing out of his head, and I couldn't believe it. That's how we met Rich, was in 1993 at the Sugar Bowl. Coming out of the locker room, into the tunnel, down underneath the, the bleachers there in the Superdome in New Orleans, he was, he was kind of hitting everybody on the pads, and, and I still don't know to this day how he got a, a press credential, but he was down there, basically right outside the team locker room and right before we hit the field. He was hitting people on the shoulder pads and on the helmet saying, come on, let's go win. And I told him, I said, hey man, you know what would really fire these guys up? If you started beating your head on that pole right there. I remember standing there in the locker room area and um, there was this particular pole and um, it had like a red mark on it, like a paint mark to where they were gonna, you know, back equipment up to or whatever and anything. And so just off the top of my head, being spontaneous, I said, okay, I said, uh, I said, check this out. It was a beautiful sight. I mean, he just cocked back and just boom, 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 and just split open, <laughs> like right in the middle of his forehead. He's just yelling like, pain, I want to see this pain. <laughs> it was on. He was no longer Richard Benzing from Jacksonville. He was crazy rich. So he's not the kind of guy that's going to intimidate anybody, but I would think if any player, I don't care who you are, if you're standing there moments before a game and a guy runs up to you and says, I'll do anything to fire you guys up, and then he bangs his head against a pole and blood starts rushing out of his head, I would think that's going to get people excited to play a little football. Obviously, Steve Spurrier is, is an incredible coach, and he had a great coaching staff uh, those years that I was at Florida. But there wasn't really, and in, in Spurrier included, there wasn't really that fire and brimstone, stand up in the locker room, let's go kick their ass kind of guy that would really, really motivate us before the game. And we kind of found him that night in New Orleans. Crazy Rich Benzing from that night on was forever a part of University of Florida football. What's gonna happen to Peyton Manning? All day long, baby, all day long. Whoever don't do it, I'm gonna come down Doe Campbell Field I'm gonna pancake you. So he was like that sixth man, as you could say, in basketball. He had his part in the team, not on the field, but off the field, for just bonding the team together. You know, he was that entertainment as if, like, the linemen or the D line on the NFL level go out to eat together, and, you know, so they can get some bonding in. But, you know, in college, you don't have the money to do that, so you brought in free entertainment, which was rich. Puff the Magic Dragon. No, no, I don't like that song. I like this song better. I like pleasure spiked with pain and music is my aeroplane. It's my aeroplane. Rich would show up during the week, kind of get us excited, and then there he was every single game. Uh, th there was Rich you know, getting off the bus. You come out of the locker room and you expect to see Rich there. Hyped up, just as hyped and ready to go as you are and you know you didn't want to let him down you want to have that intensity just like him and uh because you know if he could he'd be out there right there with you running and hitting people and backing you up honestly i wish we could have threw some pads on him put him on the kickoff team i promise you, he probably would have hurt some out of died trying the energy that, th that this guy had it you know he's probably at, at that time in his late 30s and uh just just tons of energy and he, he certainly uh motivated us a lot and, and, and kept a lot of laughter in the locker room um, with all of the, with the, keep it light during the, during the championship year. You know, motivation is a powerful thing. When you can uh, you know, hang out with a, a team that is committed to winning and, you know, when you can take a group of guys of 35 to 40, 40 football players and just have them so jacked up to go out and, you know, take care of business on the football field, you know, it gives you a really good feeling, you know, especially when you're friends with, you know, basically the whole team and everything. It's just uh, to see them guys and the smiles on their faces and the, you know, the reaction they get seeing me act up and being crazy and how it rubs off on them. I mean, it's just, uh, it don't get no better than that. So uh, 
So, so he's oh, rolling out, and it. he's watching Ben Hanks come like this, and he's trying to deliver the ball downfield, and he can't do it. And he went to, as soon as he made that turn right there, here's Monty okay. Grow just. Hi, welcome back to the show. We're reenacting uh, the the big hit Monty Grow on Stud Still, West Virginia, in the uh, Sugar Bowl in '93. Uh, this is this guy Crazy Rich. So he Stud Still, Stud Still is back in the pocket, yeah. and he's looking, he's oh, looking. Yeah. Here comes Ben Hanks from the uh, right hand side, and Stud Still kind of gets a beat on him, and he's going to go to move. And when he turned to get away from him, like that, here comes Monty. Boom! The sound that echoed through the Sugar Bowl. I mean, it's just, you can still hear it to this day. You can walk in there and that, just like that, you can hear it. And that sound just echoes through my mind sometimes at night. <laughs> Rich, wake up, man. Rich, you're going to be late. Work out. Rich, wake up. Wake up, it's time for workout. I mean, I'm already ready. I'm ready. Let's go. He would come to town, uh, we'd bring him in to work out. See, that's another side of Rich. He used to tell us that he ran like a 4-3-40. This is pain. So we'd say, well, we got to get you on a team in the NFL. So we'd bring him in and work him out. And that was fun. You know, as Coach Spurrier would say, you know, you got to have a lot of want to. You know, that Rich had want to. With pretty much every team in the country, especially here, uh, there was a time that you could spend some time with your family on the road, uh, you know, whether it be in the hotel lobby, but uh, friends, family, uh, well-wishers, as they were called, were not allowed in the room. So Jamie Spronis, uh, Malcolm Jowers, you know, those guys were in charge of, of the bed check, Doc Lucky, and they'd go around and, you know, Nick Traver, you here? Yeah, we're here. You know, they check us in, okay, go to bed. And then he'd get down to James's room, and you know James and his roommate were there, and Rich was in the room. The night before the Georgia game, I guess in '96, and I'm making room check, and I go into this one room. It's a little noisier and rowdier than you'd like. <laughs> and I go in there and find it. A guy named Zach Piller and a guy named James Bates were kind of had uh, Crazy Rich in there with them. And Crazy Rich was in there eating Coke cans and banana peels. <laughs> to me, eating Coke cans and banana peels and having the name Crazy Rich is all a pretty damn good match. Crazy Rich. How you doing? You like pain? I like pain. <laughs> we didn't bring him to town just for football games, and we didn't bring him to town just for motivation for football. Any excuse we could find to bring Crazy Rich to town. I remember when Bates was a, a junior and a senior, he was in a, what they call telecom, which is TV radio broadcasting. My senior year, I had a production class. And part of the class was learning basically each role in producing a television show. And when it was your turn to be director, you had to bring in a talent. You volunteer, step up here. Yeah, you, come here. Come up here. Come here, I'm gonna motivate you. Come here, come here. Put your war face on. What kind of face is that? That ain't a war face. This is a war face. Come on, man. Like that. That's pain. Come on, get motivated. Come on. There you go. Pain. Let me see the pain. Come on, pain. 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 That's it, pain. Give me more pain. More pain. One more time, right here. Come on. Yeah, that's pain. Oh, man. That's, you know, those are good times, man. When I would show up down there, you know, and come to Bates' class and all that, it would start out, you know, there'd be like one or two people in the room, and then within, within an hour had passed, you know, there was like, 20, 25, 30 people, you know, just eating this stuff up. It was really one of Rich's best performances when you look at it because he had to stay up there and keep going for like four or five minutes for his talent. And all his talent is is just yelling pain over and over and over again. That's all we had really ever known. Let me see the pain! Come on, pain! 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 That's it, pain! So we had kind of tried to help him out with some props and and we give him this like little stretch cord, and it's just beautiful how he just keeps going and keeps going. I got a good one. 
This guy right here, his name's Mr. Sick. Dr. Sick, that's, that, you must be talking about my friend right here on my arm. That's my buddy, he's like, that's the inner me that comes out on game day. That little area we call the sick area in the tunnel area down there at Florida Field. Players that have seen Dr. Sick, you know, it's like a motivation for them when they see that tattoo of Dr. Sick. He's a motivation speaker in his own right, so he, uh, he's hanging tough there on the left arm. Uh, he's not really saying nothing. He's sitting there screaming in pain. Kind of like a, you know, rock star attitude type, you know. It's time to rock and roll. It's time to bring it all, you know, and just bring the pain. Exactly. Yeah, just, he's all about the pain. I guess that's where the pain really started at, you know, back in 89 when I got this tattoo. That, uh, the pain, you know, it hurt a little bit, but the more I sat there and watched the tattoo artist put him on, you know, the pain started feeling good. So the more pain that was administered to my left arm here, the more better I felt. Years went by, the pain just grew and grew and grew until now it's just, you know, it's like a mainstay down there at UF. So this is where it all went down. This is the sick area, as Rich liked to call it, right here in the tunnel, waiting on the gators to come running out. And a lot of motivation, a lot of, a lot of pain took place right here, but it didn't always take place right here on game days. It's like a a big exam. You can't expect to do well on an exam if you cram at the last second with all your studying. Well, the same thing with motivation. You can't get all your motivation at the last second. Sometimes for the big games, like an FSU game, Rich would have to come to town early, like a Thursday, start the motivation uh, in a big way. And in 1996, before the regular season FSU game, the motivation was, it was on in that locker room in there. It was two days before the Florida State game, and I had ventured into the locker room area after practice. At the time, is, uh, when the locker room had these giant blow fans, where they would throw all the pads down in front of to dry off, and I decided to climb up on one of these giant fans one afternoon while everybody was in there in the locker room, and um, I just started talking. Are y'all, are y'all up for this game against Florida State? Because I tell you what, what I heard on the news today, I didn't like. Peter Colwell is the main mouth for Florida State. He says in order to stop Florida, shut down the offensive attack, let's get to Danny Werfel. Is this what needs to happen to Peter Colwell? On every play! On every play! Every play! Every play! What needs to happen to Peter Colwell? One more time! A couple players started chanting my name, and within seconds, the whole locker room was just chanting my name, screaming, Rich, 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 Hey! 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 Something that you could probably see out of a Batman movie, and then just went into a, a frantic rage of just me and about probably six to eight players just tearing that locker room apart and getting fired up for that Saturday's game against Florida State. And he gets up, fired up, and, and just goes on a rant and, and looping around the locker room and throwing trash cans, and he broke Tony George's mirror. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That, I mean, that was pure entertainment in its purest form, and you couldn't beat that with State. That was the best. Everyone loves Lad. You know, he was better than trying to go see Cedric the Entertainer or Bernie Mac. You know, he was right here and he enjoyed being around us and he always picked our spirits up, even after bad practice or whatnot. We knew we could count on him, call him, and he'll show up ready to do his thing. So everyone sat around and waited for him to show up and enjoy every moment that he gave us. If you guys didn't have a, a a guy that was a cut-up guy, a guy you could laugh with, that season would have been very serious. That team had a lot to prove that year. And I think there was an enormous amount of pressure because of the way the previous season ended. There was an enormous amount of pressure because of the past history of the program and the games and the championships that the team had won. Yet they hadn't won that national title yet. So I think if you don't have it, he was almost like a pressure valve where you turned him on and then all the pressure in the air just went Pfft. The scene what happened in the locker room, right? That's just a sample. That's nothing what can happen when we go in the sick area. We all had a ton of pressure on us um, to perform at our highest levels. And to come in the locker room and 
and uh, and 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 deal with Crazy Rich and uh, and see him do his his antics. Uh, certainly kept it light in the locker room and certainly kept it light around the around all the guys and and, and that was that was certainly a, a ton of fun. You know the, the fellas like to have a good time and uh, we all you know all us together had a good sense of humor and he fit he fit in he fit in perfectly with us. He enabled that team to play loose. Which, when you really think about it, especially after the devastating loss at Florida State, that was a team that needed to play loose in the SEC championship game, and more than anything, needed to play loose in the biggest game of the history of that program and the biggest game in the history of that big, bitter rivalry. Just like I told Matt Hayes out there, just like real. forget writing about you know uh, tea and coffee, bedtime stories, newspaper articles, and all that. It's none of that. This is a real deal. The last three games this season, they all mean one thing: our goal, national championship, Sugar Bowl, and we're going to go back to the to the pole. And instead of repainting it, we're going to repaint it. He always brought a smile to my face and, and everybody's face around here wearing the orange and blue. And uh, I just think he found the right group of guys to kind of get it all started, you know, for good reason. And he helped us uh, to win it all. I've been to a lot of campuses, covered a lot of college football games, seen a lot of crazy fans, gotten some emails from a lot of crazy fans. None of them come close to Crazy Rich. He is on a level far above anyone else, just for his complete and utter passion for his team and for the game. It's been rewarding, and uh, you know I just look forward to you know this coming year and then 50 years after here because I plan to be around a long time, and I plan to be down there in that tunnel area, at, uh, getting kids that ain't even conceived yet fired up one day, and uh, it's just going to be uh, yeah, something for them to look back on and remember, and. Uh, you know, to talk about them to their kids, and, and it's just about a bunch of pain. And that's what it's all about. Life is pain, you know, but uh, pain don't have to be the kind of emotion where it hurts you. It's an emotion that can make you stronger. Yep, 10 years ago, 1996, national champions. Got the paint here in the swamp to prove it. We've also got the pain to prove it. The nice pain, the motivation behind the 1996 National Championship. Hi, how you doing? Word has it Rich Benson has just been spotted here in Gainesville. We're going up to the Oaks Mall to check it out. Go. Daddy! Oh, yeah! Oh. Hey, what do you feel like, baby? Woo! What is that? Poisonable. I can play for anybody, any NFL team. I can cover anybody, I can catch any ball. It comes my way. Who's paying? You're paying. Who's paying? My pay. Who's paying? Very paying. Who's paying? Pain. 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 Pain.